been, I've been asked several times uh, why this play, and actually. Um, Keith and Susan at Bristol, the artistic directors, uh, brought the play to me uh, and asked me if I uh, was interested in working on the project. And uh, of course, I was just like, absolutely. What is this play? <laughs> so, um, so then I, you know, then I of course read it and fell in love with it, and um, also fell in love with Irma Bombeck, uh, who I was not particularly familiar with uh, before I started researching. So um, it's been really exciting. It's always fun when you get to learn something um, new and have an amazing opportunity. So it's been a great combo. Uh, this piece is incredibly relevant today. Uh, there, there's sort of a, I feel like there's sort of a third wave of feminism that's happening right now um, with the Me Too movement and, um, and just sort of uh, with America sort of taking stock in the fact that maybe we aren't as far along in terms of women's uh, women's rights as we could be. And Irma Bombeck was, um, I mean, she's mostly known as um, a humorist and a housewife, but she also was a very, um, a very active uh, presence in the fight for the ERA and a feminist. So she, um, she along with uh, Betty Friedan, Gloria Steinem, uh, Bella Abzug, she uh, fought for the ERA and, and failed. Um, and uh, so in her reflections about how not much has changed in, in that fight in terms, you know, uh, that there's a lot more that still needs to be done. It's sort of, it's sort of interesting to look at her um, and look at where we are now um, and just see how relevant that struggle still is. I have a lot of favorite moments in this play, but it's one of those plays where if I tell you the favorite moment, then you're not going to laugh. So, uh, because it's, um, it's all the jokes, it's all of Irma Bombeck's zinger one-liners that are my absolute favorite parts of the play. Um, there is a joke, it's Irma Bombeck writing, it's directly from her her works uh, that literally makes me laugh every time our actress, Leisha, says it. Um, but if I, I just, I can't spoil it for you. No spoilers. Um, but yeah, I also really love, uh, Leisha's a great, she's a great uh, physical comedian um, as well as, uh, you know, she she's great with lines, but also with physical comedy. So there's a section where she's impersonating a housewife that I really enjoy. Um, she's sort of like the pinup girl housewife, uh, vacuuming and uh, wearing high heels. And I just, I find that segment to be delightful um, because of what she brings to it as an actress. I think the most challenging thing about a piece that's about a public figure is finding the right person to play that that person. Um, and Irma Bombeck, uh, you know, she was a columnist, but she also became, you know, she was on television as well. So the public has this image in their minds of what she looks like, what she sounded like. So um, there's no way to uh, get the exact replica of that person. But what we were seeking was somebody who could embody her spirit. Um, that's what I was really looking for. So um, not necessarily a person that looked exactly like Irma Bombeck, but someone who was witty in the same way um, and likable in the same way. Um, so casting was um, was a challenge and uh, we had to go to New York. We, we did try to cast locally uh, in Philadelphia, but um, couldn't quite find that right blend. Um, and then we went to New York and saw a bunch of people and found Leisha and she's just that great, she's just that great combination of uh, the ability to sort of have this dry wit, but also never veer into mean. It's always likable and that's how Irma Bombeck was. So I think we found our, we found the, the right lady for the job and uh, I can't wait for everyone to see what she does with it. So, Things that I, I would just love for the audience to look out for. Um, the the design I think is really fantastic. So when I um, when I work with Roman, our set designer, who's so brilliant, um, I told him that what I really wanted was to create the ideal suburban home of the 1960s, so that then Irma Bombeck can come in and with her words and her humor sort of shatter that feminine mystique from uh, you know from a theatrical standpoint. So when you walk in the house is just so evocative of that split level 1960s suburban ranch style 50s 60s down to uh the scenic dressing so uh if you if you if you rem if you recall from from the 60s and 50s the advertisements for uh for homes there were these sort of 
they were sort of drawn um, and sort of sketchy looking and uh, so the trees that are on set look like they've been lifted out of those suburban home ads of that era so that everything just looks perfect and picturesque so that then when Irma Bombeck comes in and starts uh, joking about um, living in the suburbs with three kids and how crazy it was for her it sort of shatters that perfection um, so I'm excited for I'm excited for audiences to see the set and the set is just so it's just so much fun there's you know just little vintage touches all over uh, that I think I think people will get a kick out of um, I've had several people come in and have a look at the set and go, oh my God, this reminds me of my grandma's house. <laughs> I love that. When I first was cast in this role um, and thought, okay, now what is it that I need to do to learn before I'm really, you know, starting to, well, actually even through the, the audition process, started reading some of Irma Bombeck's material, so I was more familiar with it. Um, but then actually, I, after I was actually cast in the role, started going back and um, really doing some research about Irma herself. Things that I could find online, um, found a biography of Irma and read that. Um, I also did a lot of research on a time in history that really affected what Irma did. Uh, the women's rights movement, the Equal Rights Amendment. Uh, she was very uh, active in that. And so by talking to my mom, about what that was like as an adult woman during that time because of course even though I was alive at the time it didn't I don't think I felt it impact me as much because I was kind of in my own little world and not seeing the bigger picture so chatting with my mom um, about what that was like for her doing again research on the time and on the Equal Rights Amendment um, and also then going back and reading or rereading The Feminine Mystique which was a book that really hit Irma hard uh, she felt kind of called on the carpet uh, by Betty Friedan uh, for some of her uh, lighthearted, humorous, humorous attitude toward being a wife and a mother, and was kind of offended at first by some things that Betty Friedan said about her. And so to go back, then she went, read the Feminine Mystique, and realized that yeah, this is this is an issue. It's it affects her. It affects all women of that time period, and actually all of us even today. So, so that's been a, a really neat thing about this is not just doing the research for the role but then actually having the research that I am doing impact the way that I feel about women's place in society today. My familiarity with Irma uh, prior to doing all of the research that I did was more by reputation than by actual experience. I remember my mom thinking she was funny and I remember reading the column in the newspaper partially because um, when I was younger and would read the newspaper I would go to certain sections of the newspaper that I found more interesting like the funnies uh, dear Abby all of the, the columns I found much more interesting than the news headlines so I would do that but of course what she was writing about I don't know that I understood you know that much of it uh, it was just kind of like oh this is you know a woman talking about being in a family and what goes on in the family, just kind of like you read Bill Keen's uh, cartoon. I can't. I never remembered whether it was Family Circus or Family Circle. I remember loving those and thinking th about them on a certain level, and yet my mother finding them funny for a totally different reason. So really, it was just kind of through uh, an awareness of being younger, uh, and then unfortunately, uh, when I became a mom, I think the time of Irma's writing had. I don't want to say it had passed, but it was not so much in the public consciousness. And so, unfortunately, she isn't someone I read when I was a mom. Um, I mean, I'm still a mom, but when I was a mom of, of a young child, and wow, do, do I wish I had, because reading it now is, I don't, I don't know, it's just, it's sort of like, oh, gosh, I really needed to hear this 20 years ago instead of now. I mean, I'm glad I'm reading it now, but boy why didn't I know this then because I think it would have really helped me a lot as a mom boy some of the challenges with this production I think the probably the biggest challenge is it being a one-woman show uh, when you do a play and you have other people on stage with you it, there it creates like an energy and a dynamic that helps kind of know 
how the scene is going or if this is the right, you know, this is working for everybody and and it just it's some things just kind of evolve. This has been a little tougher because I have had to rely more on my director and my stage managers to kind of know that what I'm doing is working or isn't working. Um, because without an audience there and without any scene partner on the stage, you are you know, you think you know how something is going to play, but you hear it in your head, sort of like a, a, a rhythm or a melody in your head. And that may not be what's being heard from outside your head. And since you don't have other actors on the stage, to kind of do that little dance with it, it's all on you and then it feels like a huge responsibility um, on the other hand I'm not going to mess anybody up on their lines because there isn't anybody else to mess up so. <laughs> one of my favorite parts of working on Irma and that that I'm hoping that is um, That, that I'm hoping is is evident in the show is that even though the material is I don't want I don't want to say dated but is 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 kind of from a historical perspective the relevance of it today and how the some things just don't change um, like I said I I'm sort of disappointed that Irma's writings were not in vogue when I was uh, a parent, a, a parent of a young child, or maybe they were, and I just was totally unaware of it. But I, I think you know, had there, had those columns been running in a newspaper when I was a mom, uh, that I that I would have been more aware of it, and it would have actually helped to have had that kind of perspective. Young moms just put and old moms <laughs> put on put a a pressure on themselves to succeed and to be you know the best mother they can be the best wife they can be and being able to just say uh, I always I kind of hate the, the phrase good enough but it's like you know what this is good enough uh, this is this is what I can do and and understanding the humor behind situations that are important they're important situations but there is still uh, something funny to recognize in it. Irma says in the play, if you can't make it better, you better laugh at it. And if you can laugh at it, you can live with it. And I think that's what I wish I had been able to do earlier as a mom, was to laugh at things. And then they would have been easier to live with. Uh, but you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, <laughs> and Irma says not to live with regrets, so I can't spend too much time thinking about that. <laughs> I am not a person that is typically really big on seeing movies a second time, reading books a second time, um, and yet I really, really would like people to go back, and even if you've read Irma when you were younger, even if you read The Feminine Mystique when you were younger, Reading it now, after you've had some years of perspective, it really touches a part of you and will affect, and I think will affect you differently than it did 20 years ago. So it's something that I think that, um, that everyone should do. Should Even if they thought they were familiar with Irma Bongbeck, was, is to revisit it again. If you thought you knew The Feminine Mystique, reread it again. And that's what I think is so great about doing this show. and doing live theater in general it allows us to take things from the past and bring them back into the present so that a whole nother generation uh, can experience it and learn from it some of the challenges on this show are that it's a period piece and for perhaps people that usually means trying to find the most accurate item you could possibly find because a lot of audience members will remember exactly what would have been in that room in that era. So for this show, we, you know, Irma was a real person. She lived a real life. And we wanted to have everything be as realistic as possible. The difference between props and set pieces is usually a little wiggly. <laughs> so for this show, uh, a lot of it was props. Uh, most times, the simple definition is a prop is something that the actor will touch, handle, or interact with and a set piece is something that sort of surrounds them. So for this show, Irma has a bed, she has nightside tables, she has an armchair, 
an ottoman and dining room set, and that's all props. So most of it is a prop, but sometimes a prop will turn into a set piece. Sourcing so. props, it depends on the show. For this show, we did a lot of local research. So we found lamps in Bristol. I went to the Bristol Antique Market, and I found a lot of things there because we're looking for the real items. So it's a lot of Craigslist hunting or Facebook Marketplace. You're trying to connect with people that have those items still in their life and are trying to sell them or you know, free up space in their own home. And a lot of times it works out great because they're still in good shape. They've been in, uh, in the attic for a while, so they're just dusty. And that works a lot of the time. Uh, sometimes, though, you have to just go to Amazon and order it. So uh, Mid-Century Modern is a great era to work in right now because it's really popular and there are people cropping up re refurbishing this furniture. So you can find a lot of these items uh, for sale on, you know, in Philadelphia and typewriters are really popular again. So you can go to Staples and there's a, a section for typewriters and you can get more ribbon ink and it's exciting because sometimes you work on something and you're like I don't even know what this is supposed to look like you sort of have to guess or you have to look in like archives and this one you can talk to people you're working with and say do you remember this clock does this clock look right to you and they definitely are like oh I have stories about clocks like that <laughs> one one of the things that I enjoyed when uh, one of our meetings we had to discuss what time did we want the clock to be on the fireplace because we thought it would be a little weird if the clock was telling time on stage because then people keep looking at the clock thinking, oh, this, sh this is too long. <laughs> what is, when is the, when can I go to the bathroom? But uh, we, so we had to have a meeting about what time are we going to put on the clock? And, and you think like, oh, in the course of the play, does she ever make a reference to what time it is? You, you know, do we have to follow the, the script in that way? And we just sort of at the end of the dis day decided it'll be around four o'clock. The only props that I had to make for the show were paper props. So Irma has a letter that she reads and she gets a note from her kids. And there's a magazine that we wanted to be really specific. So everything else was purchased uh, or sort of rehabbed. But the only things really built from scratch were the paper. The most difficult prop to find was definitely the ottoman because we originally thought maybe we weren't even going to use an ottoman. So we bought a chair that we really liked and then we wanted an ottoman. So I got an ottoman and we used it for about a day and it wasn't right. It, w it w didn't look good with the chair. So we bought three more options to choose from and none of them were quite right either. So we bought a fifth option <laughs> and then we finally got the ottoman that we wanted. So I'm just swimming in extra ottomans now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sometimes something will change based on look once we get into the actual space. So for us, this in this show, that was definitely the table. We had a table and the six matching chairs that came with it, and we loved it in the rehearsal room. And then we got to the stage, and because of sight lines and the color on the tabletop, we thought maybe that wasn't the right table after all. So we took apart the table, we salvaged the legs, and then we put those legs on a new tabletop, shrunk the table in size, changed the color on the top, made it brighter, and then that's our table. Friday on Cheers to You. I named it Quatrain because, first of all, the, a, a quatrain in poetry is a four-line segment of, of a poem, but it also uses four hops that produce the big right. flavor. New episodes of Cheers to You every Friday at CourierTimes.com.
Game On is brought to you by the Bucks County Community College. He's quarterback Evan O'Donnell threw for 137 yards. He had a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown on a great catch by Anthony Giordano in the second half. Sadie East improves to 1-1 with the win, while Hatboro slips to 0-2. week on Navigating Life. I'm happy to say I've got a world record. Now it's easy to get a world record when you're 65 years old and 114 weight class. I don't have a whole lot of people. Navigating Life at CourierTimes.com is brought to you by Pickering Manor. Tune in weekly for more Philly sports. I can't miss podcasts from sports columnist Tom Moore and host Patrick Burkery. They take a deep dive weekly on the Philadelphia sports scene, breaking down the latest on the Eagles, Phillies, Sixers, Flyers, college sports, and more. You can find more Philly sports on iTunes and Stitcher, and it's brought to you by the Bucks County Courier Times, the Intelligencer, and the Burlington County Times.